So Jenny, you have a new paper out today on geostrategic competition in the Pacific Islands. It's really interesting. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, it's called Big Enough for All of Us. It's New Analysis, uh, Geostrategic Competition in the Pacific Islands. And I stole the, the title Big Enough for All of Us from Hillary Clinton. Um, she mentioned that term when she spoke at the Pacific Islands Forum meeting in Maratonga and Cook Islands last year. Um, and I decided to, to undertake the research because in all my years here at the Lowy Institute, um, every single visiting foreign delegation or even Australian visitor, um, whether they be a diplomat or a military officer or a, a think tank or academic, would ask me, so what is China up to in the Pacific? So I figured this was a really big question in the international arena that, that needed to be addressed. Um, so I looked at it in terms of you know, what what was China really up to and, and did China um, pose a, a, threat, a threat to the geostrategic order in the region. So, so Jenny, what is China up to then? Well, um, what I'm arguing in the paper is actually contrary to what most of my colleagues in this field argue. I mean, most, most people tend to see China as a, as a threat to the geostrategic order of the Pacific. They see China as a potential security threat, certainly a challenge to Australia's dominance. Um, I argue the opposite, that Australia's dominance is certainly in the South Pacific is well entrenched, as is the US dominance in the North Pacific. Um, even if China did have the geostrategic ambitions that my colleagues suggest it does in the future, um, it still has a long way to go before it can catch up to the, to the dominance of Australia and the United States and some of the other traditional powers. Um, where we're seeing China's influence rise is predominantly in the economic sphere. Um, we're seeing China become the second largest bilateral trading partner of the region. Um, and just as it's the first, <laughs> the primary trading partner of Australia, and this is to be expected, China's trading influence worldwide is well known. Um, we're seeing increased Chinese investment in the region um, in the last few years, and certainly a, a rapid rise in investment in Papua New Guinea, um, and certainly in Fiji. We're seeing a lot of Chinese investment in infrastructure, um, in building roads, um, much needed ports, airports and, and so forth. So I think China's making a real contribution to the region in this way. Um, what some of my colleagues have argued is that, that this is in fact um, setting up China with some leverage that will enable it to, to seek primacy in the region in the future. But what I argue is that you shouldn't equate normal economic competition with geostrategic competition, which is really um, played out in the military and diplomatic spheres um, and they really are two quite separate things and what China is pursuing is, is certainly its business interests and its economic interests in the region. It's been a really interesting conversation and I think there's probably going to be quite a lot of debate that comes out of this. Yeah, I hope so too. Thanks for passing.